Hi, this video is to show you how the open enrollment process works each year. So the first thing that you need to remember is you need to check and make sure all of your employees who should be uh, eligible for open enrollment have the appropriate benefit profile on their record. So the way I do that, or the way Kathy Watts would do that, is you can go to the hamburger and then under the team, just go to my team, go to employee information. And if you don't already have a uh, report that just shows uh, the benefit um, profile, let's go ahead and create one. So we'll go to the three dots and we'll add and remove columns. And you can say benefit and it pulls up all kinds of stuff. So we want the employee benefit profile. We'll add that. And then we can just take off a lot of these other items. And of course I said, did that without even removing everything I intended. Okay, so we can see oh, that I chose the wrong profile. I chose a date instead of the actual profile name. So let's go back over here to add remove columns. And benefit profile effective date is already over there. Let's go with current benefit profile. Move that over, we'll remove the effective date and all of these things that I said I was gonna remove. I'm gonna do that and apply. And now we can see that we have benefit profiles applied to all of these employees. So just make sure they all have the right benefit profile on them. And then uh, go ahead and go to your benefit profiles and set up your open enrollment. So next, you're going to go to the menu and you're going to go to the gear. Under profiles and policies, there's benefits and under benefits, we choose profiles. Let's save that. So here are our employee profiles, the one that we're gonna do the open enrollment on. And all you need to do is you're going to check to make sure your uh, passive enrollment is turned on. Uh, for new employees, this will already be set to your current waiting period. And then to add a new open enrollment, you just click the add button and you say that you're going to do the new open enrollment uh, for the year starting 01, 01, 2023. And we're gonna run that open enrollment from uh, November 15th, 2022 to November 30th, 2022. And when we add that and save, now our open enrollment is, pre is ready to go out at that time. So the other things that you wanna check when you're doing open enrollment is, are all the correct benefit plans listed? If we've had changes to any of these benefit plans, you can drill down on the plan, go to the pencil under the dates, and then you can come over and actually add a, uh, a line that uh, would tell you when the, your next benefit period is gonna start. This one actually has one that's gonna start on 1-1-23. You click the pencil after you add the line and you put in your new monthly premium and the new amount that the employer will pay. Uh, the system will calculate the rest. It will calculate the employee's percentage per month or the employee's amount per month. And then it will look at their pay periods and determine how much per pay period should come out. Of course, you would do that for every coverage level that is available under that particular plan. And then you would repeat that for any other plans in your uh, benefit profile for your open enrollment. Don't forget that under each group, we've got a medical group, under each group you have a place to view, edit, a brief explanation 
of that medical group and any information you want to share about um, the coverages. You can determine to use waived reasons or not by checking this box. And if you want to require them, you would check this box. And then in each section, uh, for instance, this is medical, we're going to say the employee can select up to one and they must select at least one. So they would at least select one or waive one. It also determines whether, uh, by checking these boxes, whether this is uh, included in a life change event or also included in a new employee enrollment. You would repeat this process for each of the groups as you go down the screen. And that's all there is to it. Of course, if you have any questions or you have some special needs, because there's always exceptions, uh, be sure to reach out to CS3 Technology and put in a support ticket and someone will be right with you.